Hi, I'm Terry from EverydaySober.com. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you already know that I am a recovered alcoholic. I recovered from the hopeless grips that alcohol had on me. Don't get me wrong, the disease of alcoholism is still in me and I can never drink again if I want to stay out of its grips. However, by working a simple program, I was able to get sober. Before I found sobriety, I got to the point where I absolutely had to have alcohol in my system 24 hours a day. My entire existence revolved around alcohol. Alcohol was a number one priority in my life. My life was falling apart in every way possible, but I couldn't stop drinking. Maybe the problem was that I liked drinking. I liked the effect alcohol had on me. Even in the end of my drinking, I liked it. But I knew it was killing me. I tried every possible way to quit or control my drinking I could think of, except finding help. I thought I could do it on my own, but it never worked. I was not willing to put in the effort and make the sacrifices and changes needed to get sober. Eventually, I was basically beaten into submission. I decided no matter what, I would do whatever I had to do to get sober. Maybe you're having trouble stopping. It can be very difficult to quit. One of the problems with alcoholism is this insanity that kicks in. We'll keep on drinking despite the negative consequences that happen because of our alcohol consumption. To successfully stop drinking, you really need to want to stop. So maybe you've gotten to the point where you really want to stop. How do you quit? How do you get past the point of wanting, or worse, needing a drink? That was a big stumbling block for me. Every time I would stop, I would not only want a drink, but I needed a drink to get rid of the withdrawals. So what next? Well, if you've gotten to the point where you really want to quit, you've made a big step. Now, you need to develop a certain mindset. A mindset for getting and staying sober. Part of this mindset is becoming willing. What do I mean by become willing? In this video, I'm going to explain what willingness means and how you can become willing in relation to quitting alcohol. First, let's define willing. Willing is defined as disposed, inclined, or cheerfully consenting or ready to do something. When someone is willing to do something, their minds become more open and receptive. They may decide to do things now that they didn't want to do in the past. Being willing means they're open to change rather than fighting it. I've been willing to do a lot of things in my life. I remember years ago before alcohol completely controlled my life. Grant you, I was still a heavy drinker, but I was very athletic. I studied martial arts, I ran marathons, I cycled wherever, whenever I could. When a belt test or a fight or some big event was coming up, I would train. I was willing to put in a ridiculous amount of effort to train for whatever event was coming up. In martial arts, I had an instructor. The instructor would guide me in the right direction for my training so I would be successful. I became open and receptive to whatever he told me to do. I certainly didn't like the things, just many of the things he told me to do, like the dang wind sprints. But I trusted that if I did whatever he suggested, I, I would do well in the event. This proved to be the case every time that I stayed willing to do what it takes. When I didn't do these things, my event would not go as well as I had hoped. Sometimes I would even fail. I remember one time I was training for this big kickboxing match. This was full contact, two dudes kicking each other's ass. I trained. I trained really hard. But I didn't listen to exactly what my instructor told me to do during my training. I lost that fight. I ended up with a bunch of stitches in my ear. I got my ass kicked because I wasn't willing to do what it takes to train properly. I learned a valuable lesson. To be willing to listen to what others and do what they suggest. Now, when it came to drinking, I would never listen to what others suggested. I never became willing to do what it takes to quit alcohol until it almost killed me. In addiction recovery, a person that is willing will put in the effort to do what it takes to get and stay sober. Maybe you're thinking, Terry, how do I become willing to not drink? I like drinking. <laughs> when I got sober, I learned that I needed to change some of the things I did throughout the day. 
I started to fill my time with other activities that didn't involve alcohol. Now, I'm not talking about going to five recovery meetings a day or shutting myself in, a, in my house, afraid to go anywhere because I may be exposed to alcohol somehow. I had to kind of replace my activities that included alcohol with different activities that I enjoyed doing. I mean, if I wasn't going to do things that I enjoyed doing, how likely would it be for me to stay sober? In the past, I liked to go to bars with friends, so I had to figure out something else to do that didn't involve drinking. I knew that going to bars with those same friends and not drinking was just not going to work. I knew I would eventually drink, so in the beginning, I would go to recovery meetings at the hospital and 12-step groups as well. Yeah, I know it doesn't sound like fun, but actually it was okay. Going to these meetings allowed me to know that I was not alone that other people had the same challenges and stories that I had. I learned that most of these people are actually quite normal. Like me, they just can't drink. I found people that I have something in common with. I started to develop some new non-drinking friends. Now, as my drinking escalated, I pretty much stopped going out. I started to isolate more and more. I would stay home, drink, watch bad TV all day and all night until I passed out. So once again, so I wouldn't isolate, I had to figure out something else to do. I started to get back into the activities that I used to do before alcohol ruled my life. I walked my dogs, I hiked, I bicycled, I got a job that I like. I did things that I enjoyed doing. I started to gravitate towards people that have been successful in recovering from alcohol addiction. I worked hard to do some of the same things that person did to stay sober. I stopped hanging out with those drinking friends as often, and when I did hang out with them, it was doing an activity that didn't involve alcohol. Unfortunately, this meant that I lost some of these friends because all I really did with them is drink. This was hard because my friends, they're really good people. It's just that they can drink responsibly, responsibly and I can't. So I had to be willing to choose my sobriety over hanging out with those friends. So my drinking days with them are over. When I first got sober, there were some other basic things I had to do differently. They included things like not going down the liquor aisle at the store, not going to bars unless I had a legitimate reason to be there, staying out of liquor stores, avoiding parties where drinking is prevalent, not drinking non-alcoholic beers or wine because there's actually usually some alcohol in these things, looking at medicine labels, and avoiding those with alcohol. Basically, I had to make sobriety my top priority throughout my day. These things I was willing to do and not do during my early sobriety were important. In early sobriety, I didn't know what or if some, something or someone was going to trigger me to drink, so I did everything possible to avoid dangerous situations. Now that I've been sober for a while, I've learned what I can and can't do, so these hard rules I set on myself earlier, they're more relaxed now. That's only because I try to work a very strong program after cold of alcohol recovery. I mean, face it, there's absolutely no way to avoid alcohol in your daily life. So you need to get to the point where alcohol is just not an issue. However, I do approach everything with sobriety in mind. Now, some of you may feel you've been forced or coerced into getting sober. Maybe you have to get sober to keep your job or your marriage and family. Maybe a judge has ordered you to get sober. This can be difficult. One that's been forced or coerced in sobriety, they may not really want to quit. They may only put half-hearted attempts at getting sober. Or maybe they may even sabotage their own sobriety just out of spite. Experience has shown that half-hearted attempts at sobriety it usually doesn't work. You have to become honest, honest with others, and more, most importantly, with yourself. For someone trying to get and stay sober, it's imperative that they're willing to do what it takes. Remember, no one can force you to get sober. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes to get sober. Many that have relapsed or don't want to get sober they may say that whatever program they tried to get sober with didn't work for them. Maybe you're thinking, Terry, I did what they told me to do and it just doesn't, didn't work. Or, I'm better now and I can control my drinking now. But the fact is, 
if you couldn't get or stay sober, you probably weren't willing. I've seen some of the worst cases of alcoholism. I've seen many of these worst alcoholics achieve lasting sobriety. I'm not talking about some angry sober dude that hates the world. I'm talking about someone that doesn't drink anymore with an awesome productive life. Anyone, no matter how bad it is, can achieve an awesome life without drinking, ever. Maybe you're one of those that have achieved sobriety in the past and have relapsed. Remember, it's okay. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters now is that you're willing to get sober again. Start from where you are right now and be willing to do the work. Don't worry about what happened. Start doing the right things to get sober now. Okay, so I've explained the importance of being willing when it comes to getting sober. So now I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to become willing. There are some very important components that are key. First, as I've kind of already explained, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to live a sober life. That means being open-minded. You need to be open to all the resources that are available. That means things like going to see a doctor to see if you need medical detox. That's huge. Possibly going to a rehab facility. Of course, you may not need a medical detox, but you should at least see the doctor. Be honest with him and figure out your next step. It's important to listen to what doctors, trained addiction counselors, and recovered alcoholics tell you to do. They have experience with alcohol abuse. They've seen it all. They can help guide you in the right direction. Remember in my martial arts story, I tried really hard to train for my fight, but I didn't train the correct way and because of that I failed. You need to deal with recovering from alcohol abuse the right way. Second, sobriety has to become a top priority in life. It's easy to fall back into drinking and it can be very difficult to stay in sobriety. So every decision that you make throughout a day needs to be with sobriety as a top priority. I'm talking things like sitting in the restaurant rather than the bar when you're going out for dinner or maybe avoiding parties where you know alcohol is going to be present. You may have to go as far as not hanging out with certain friends because the only thing you do with them is drink. Only you can determine what you can and can't do. But I would suggest you start off being on the safe side. Now this may not be easy, but if you want to stay sober, it may be imperative. Another thing I do to keep sobriety as my top priority is I plan my day. I usually plan my day the night before. After I've figured out what I'll be doing, I check to see if any of my activities might put me in a possible situation where alcohol be could become an issue. Like what one instance would be, I'm a caterer and we often cater at bars. So when I have those jobs, I need to take that into account and make sure I have a game plan, what I'm going to drink, because I know they're going to offer me alcohol, but I I'll pick a uh, plain soda or something like that, but I need to understand that I might be in a dangerous situation and the temptation may come. So I need to have a game plan every time. Now another component of willingness and sobriety is taking an active responsibility for your own recovery. Sure, addiction counselors, family, friends, doctors, your boss, maybe even a judge want you to get sober and they're probably willing to help, but to be successful you have to be willing to do the work yourself. And finally, one more super important component of willingness is you have to develop a degree of humility. You need to be open-minded and understand that you don't have all the answers. You have to listen and learn from other people's experiences. Finally, you need to get rid of any reasons you hear or you tell yourself why you may not try some certain path to recovery. If you're truly willing to get and stay sober, You've got to do whatever it takes. So, I spoke about how and why willingness is imperative to recover from alcohol addiction. I told you how you need to be open-minded and develop a degree of humility. But what does that mean? Well, if you're looking for sobriety, you should check out my next videos where I'm going to explain what it means to be open-minded and have a degree of humility in relation to recovery from alcoholism. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my other sobriety videos. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video or leave me a comment below. 
I really want to hear your perspective on the journey to sobriety. Also, check out my website, everydaysober.com, for lots of great info on how to get and stay sober. Go take my Am I an Alcoholic quiz and check out the forum where you can talk discreetly about sobriety issues. I'm Terry, a recovered alcoholic, and thanks for watching my willingness video.